Hey, I'm Fred. And I'm Ant. And this is Creator Generation. Create a generation of hype. Creator Generation features top YouTube creators and video experts sharing their tips, insights, and stories from working on the world's biggest video platform. All right, Fred, what is happening this week? We are chatting with Rosie from Rosie's Dessert Spot. I was laughing like an idiot. I made a total fool of myself. But then you put it up and people can connect with that real thing. A channel dedicated to cake decoration. Mm, yummy. <laughs> and it's just about decorating, right? Not about baking? Yeah, it's pretty much specifically about cake decorating, which is a very popular area. And Rosie's a really great example of someone who has this deep passion for something, jumped on YouTube and is sharing it with the world. It's a super example of how a creator can follow something they love, put it on YouTube and get lots of other people watching. Um, she also talks to us about how she monetizes her channel and how to use live video. Awesome. Let's get into it. Let's. Welcome, Rosie. Thanks, guys. Thanks for having me. Yeah. Um, I guess first question is like, where did it all start for you? For me, um, the cake decorating side of things, I've always loved baking and art um, since I was young. And I remember one Christmas, my sister bought me some cake decorating tools. They were like fondant decorating tools. And I thought, oh, I'm going to give these a go. And I made a cake. I looked up on YouTube how to cover a cake in fondant. It was a messy job, but I was so proud of it at the time because I thought this was legit. And I made these flowers out of fondant with the tools that she got me. And I loved it. My family was like, oh, this looks so good. I'm like, oh, you know what? I'll actually be good at this. <laughs> if you look at it now, I will never show that photo. <laughs> 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 no, but um, that's where I guess it, it stemmed from. But then the more I learned um, through YouTube videos, through Cake Central was a huge resource. That was a fantastic, really big community for cake decorators who are just starting to learn. Um, and yeah, it just kind of went from there. So I created more and more cakes. So it's interesting. So you didn't start with a like a pastry chef background. You started as an enthusiast. Yes. By okay. watching YouTube videos. Yeah. That's, and then I um, eventually got good enough that I decided to apply for a job at a bakery. And they liked my previous work. I sent in all the photos of the cakes. They really liked it. So I went in. And I think that's where it really started. The fine-tuning of the skills, working with real pastry chefs, working with cake decorators who've been in the industry for like 20 years, um, mentoring me and teaching me. And that lasted almost two years. Um, and that was fantastic. That's where everything really started to come together, getting all the skills down pat. And then I was able to share them with the world afterwards. So, so I was going to talk a little bit about sort of your background. Like you have a background in psychology. So before you were a, a cake entrepreneur <laughs> and um, cake, ge decora cake decorating genius, um, your background was in psychology and you obviously made that decision to go from that into YouTube full time. Yeah. Um, and it, that's always, you know, it's interesting because no one, it, well, I mean, there's a new generation of creators that are coming online who start as like, I'm going to be a YouTuber, but the generation previous to that were like, you know, they did something else first before they went into that. So what was that journey like? What, you know, made you think, I'm going to leave psychology and I'm going to be a YouTuber. Um, there was never an intent to become a YouTuber, <laughs> to be <laughs> honest. I, I was um, studying psychology. I finished the, um, what was it, Bachelor of Psychological Science, and then I went on to do Masters in Counselling. I was in the very last year, so I would have finished and I would have been a counsellor, and there was, um, all the theory units were done, now you had to do prac. You had to go in and see real people with real problems, and I just wasn't ready. I felt like I was going to break them. It's like, yeah, I've done all this study, but I don't want someone sitting in front of me to be walking out being worse off than when they came to see me. And I had that fear that I would really stuff someone up. So I thought, you know what? I'm just not going to do cake decorating because <laughs> it's still therapeutic. Uh, you wouldn't believe it. I have people leaving comments saying, Rosie, I join you every week because I find your voice very therapeutic and it just calms me down. I suffer from anxiety and watching your videos helps me. It's like, whoa, mind blown. <laughs> Like people can actually, you know, they come to you for all different reasons. And it's fantastic that they've come to me with that, knowing you know, I've got a psychology background and it just, it's, it's a beautiful thing. But it is a therapy, a you know, creative outlet, um, very, very stress relieving. It's an amazing art. I love it. And I think a lot of people benefit from, from it in a lot of different ways. Yeah, that is interesting. So you basically helping that psychology background has also helped you in, in, your, in your YouTubing and the way you create content. Yeah, yeah, yeah definitely. Just in terms of um, 
I was actually thinking about that this morning while I was driving, like the psychology around the channel and, and shaping your content to be more psychologically appealing to people. Yeah, Like um, one thing that I started off with that I, I noticed wasn't helpful to the channel was um, recording in a very wide frame. I mean, you're doing food related things, right? You need to work with your hands. They need to see what you're doing. So you'll bring the screen in closer and it's more inviting to them on a psychological level. They, it's like they're in the room with you. Another reason why I bought the gimbal as well, because I want more movement. Movement makes them feel like they're almost there with you. It's a bit more realistic for them. And these little aspects that you can kind of tie in. Um, yeah. yeah. To help engage better with your Yeah, yeah. yeah. More engaging, more interesting. Yeah. I get a lot of creators when they start, they're just like, okay, point the camera, <laughs> turn it on, and then they just go for it. But there's a lot of elements that, that can help you if you sort of understand different things. But where did you start? What type of videos did you start with? What was that? Oh, okay. So I start off with um, recipe videos to begin with um, and trying to make recipes look nice. So, for example, macarons, I would blend colours and try that or um, cake pops, I'll try to use different um, coloured chocolates or I'll add elements like ganache on there instead and that's where it kind of started. Uh, I've noticed, though, as the channel was growing, more people were viewing and gravitating towards the decorating side of things. And so that's where I started to focus a lot more on the decorating um, aspect of it because people had more interest in that area. And so... Yes, awesome. And first video? Oh, very first video. Yep. Oh, what was that? I think it was Christmas time. I was making uh, macarons, two-tone macarons. I mean, everyone makes macarons on YouTube. It's like, what can I do to be different? So I made like these swirly two-tone macarons. Did it do well? No, <laughs> but it didn't stop me. <laughs> okay, so obviously, you've, you've had a uh, you've been on the platform for a couple of years. You've had um, a lot of experience in that. Um, are there any distinct moments that you can stand out and go, "That was a really big high for me," and that was a really big low for me? And you you know you've learned from like that. So you know your first video going, you know. Maybe there was a viral element and then, you know, a complete disaster anywhere. Is there any an interesting story around any of those things? One experience I can probably relate to that would be making something incredible um, that you think is incredible, right? You put all this love into it. It's like, oh, this is really going to work out. It ticks, you know, the box of being something that's trending and, you know, it's really pretty and it's unique to what, you know, my own creation, X, Y, Z. You put it up and it doesn't, like, not to the way that you were hoping. And then you'd why does this always happen? I, I make a cake and it fails. So I scat that decoration completely. I take it off and then I redecorate it and I improvise. My best uh, performing <laughs> tutorials are the ones that I did not plan at all. They're just things that I, okay, I really got to, you know, put out a tutorial this week. I think this will look really good. You put it up and it does fantastically. But the things you stop and you plan, <laughs> <laughs> and they don't really do that well. So it's a, it's a hit and miss. I think that would be my biggest challenge is um, in relating to that question. That is interesting. Yeah, I mean, a lot of it comes to what the audience really wants. It's, it's yeah. a really interesting area with um, a, lot of, a lot of creators um, – like a lot of them will say, oh, I really want to make this content. I really want to do this, this, this. And then they do it and then the audience does not respond to it. I mean, we've had an experience where, you know, we'd made a video we put a lot of effort into um, and really well planned and, you know, really funny. And you put it up and the audience are like, meh, compared to some more free-flowing ones that yeah. were like that. And in the end, what we discovered was like the audience liked very specific things from creators and, you know, they liked an engagement in a very specific way. So, you know, innovating around that is okay, but going – even a little bit too far, and they're like, "No, I'm not, not going to, not going to buy into that." You know, and that can be hard for a YouTuber because they want to, you want to be more creative, you want to expand that out a bit more, don't you? So, that can be frustrating. So, I mean, the audience obviously put you in a certain box. Um, how do you do? You ever try to? How do you innovate around that? I think live stream was just a really good way to to do that. A completely different um, playing field there, but also I've decided. To, okay, you know, one thing. Um, that I didn't do at the start and I found really helped was I didn't put a lot of myself in my videos. And at the end of the day, people can take your videos off YouTube and they can upload it and you don't know who made it, but no one can fake you. Only you can do you. So involving yourself more in the videos, not only does it change things up, it makes things more interesting. You're stepping outside of your own comfort zone. You're making yourself a vulnerable human being. And you know what? People can really connect to that because I think that's a... Uh, that's anxiety that we all have, you know what I mean? So 
that's another way to change it up. Put more of yourself in there. Um, I'm like watching th- a lot of your channel recently, you don't really show much baking at all anymore. So is mm. was that that was a very specific strategic choice to start focusing more on decorating? Yes. And Although um, it's funny because I put it out to the community because it's a community tab on YouTube, and I thought I'd check. Uh, are you guys interested in seeing the recipe tutorials? And a majority of people are actually really interested, but then I'll put it up. <laughs> and people don't really gravitate towards it. So I think it's for the the few people you'd still do it. Not as often. Like I do plan on doing at least three um, tutorials coming up soon that I know they'd like like the vegan sort of stuff. So you, you would put out the recipes, but you, you'd niche it. You make it something that's really in demand as well. So it you know it's worth the... Yeah. And Time. so sort of the, what was – what a video of yours was the one that sort of sparked change or like your, the increase? Or was your channel always on the up or was there one video that really changed it all for you? Um, it was growing pretty steadily. I think one video in particular that really got it shooting up was a um, Disney Frozen-themed cake pop tutorial that I did. Um, and it was decorating them – as like a dress, so you'd shape the cake pop in the dress and you'd um, pipe this ganache dress over the top and you'd put an edible image right on top of that so it looked like it was one of the frozen princesses wearing this edible dress and that just skyrocketed for some reason. And I think it was because at that time frozen was a big thing. So um, I didn't really realise that at the time. It wasn't until afterwards I realised, oh, okay, there seems to be a trend in growth when you couple your decorative element with whatever's trending in the uh, I guess the wider media and um, and then afterwards that is one really good technique to use to help um, I guess put your channel out there and growth and whatnot. I've done that consistently now with new videos do you actually now try to match them to trends or is it more organic than that? It's for me it's honestly a little bit more organic if you want to put it that way I there's not a lot of time these days. So the videos that I do make, they're a little bit more simple. I still have the passion for it. I'm still decorating things that I love, but um, it does take a lot of time to make those sort of videos. A lot of um, uh, prepping to do beforehand and whatnot. And so, yeah. so it, it sounds like you, everything you do, you do for the audience as, as equally as you do for yourself and what you think is, is right. It's that... Is that a philosophy you carry across? It is. You also have to remember, though, you can't please everybody. And if you're not enjoying it, it's going to show through in that energy. You know what I mean? People, um, they connect better with the authenticity of what you're creating and the passion as well. They'll bond on that. Um, So if you're not doing something that you're very interested in in a tutorial, you you just, the energy just shows. You Mm. know what I mean? So, yes, connect it to the audience. Make sure that they're uh, receiving what they want to see, but make sure that it aligns with you as well. Um, Otherwise, you're not going to enjoy it and you're going to find your channel that starts to dip um, just on a morale perspective for yourself. Have you always had that that awareness of that? Uh, You talked about doing some trend, following some trends, but, um, and, you know, always being receptive to what uh, your audience is asking. Have you ever sort of skewed away from what is intrinsically passionate to you or have you um, always had that? Like sometimes you, you do do um, tutorials and you decorate cakes that just align with you because you might not have the time at the moment to plan out something that um, people have requested. So I'll do like a more simpler cake. I enjoyed it. I'll make it and I'll put it on. And sometimes it doesn't do as well as you'd hope. Um, but to be honest, you're just having fun. You've got to remember that. You just need to have fun with it. Uh, so you try to keep that philosophy as best as you can and, you know, always listen to the people. But yeah, at the end, you also have to listen to yourself too. So when you discovered the best way to engage with the audience, how did that look for you? Uh, so it was putting myself in front of the camera and just being more vulnerable. I did have a buffer, i got to say. I had my best friend over and the very first... I think it was the very first one that I ever did where it was just me and kind of blogging about cakes, which I don't normally do, but I felt the need to. Um, My best friend was there. So I could just let go. And it was a bird box challenge. So I was decorating a cake blindfolded. And you just forget about the camera and you're just raw. You're just you. I was laughing like an idiot. I made a total fool of myself. 
but then you put it up and people can connect with that real thing. You know what I mean? So just maybe have a buffer for the first couple of times if you ever want to try to make yourself available at, on a personal level, completely vulnerable to your audience. That yeah. authenticity and then being present element, it's big then. Definitely, yeah. Yeah, yeah so what's the, va- like, what's the benefit of, of that for you? Like, what do you see? I think it helps you to connect definitely with your audience. You feel more connected to them and you hope vice versa as well. And um, another thing is there are, I guess, platforms out there that can take your videos if you're not in them and whatnot, you don't have your watermark, whatever. They can take it, they can reproduce it, they can steal it, blah, blah, blah. But they can't steal you. They can't fake you. I think that was the biggest thing as well to kind of brand your channel if you think of it that way. (laughs) But you're... Naturally, you said before you're an introvert. Oh, 100%. So oh, my God. I'm the shyest person I know, and YouTube has literally changed me. Is it, you, have you got any tips for an introvert to cross that threshold to where you are now and putting you, you know, putting your face and your personality and being vulnerable in, the, in your content? Yeah, definitely. Um, don't take on what the, the negative comments say because at the end of the day, if they're there, you don't need them. They're not serving you. They're not being great. You know, just focus on the positive. You will have a lot of support from your audience. Break into it slowly as well. I mean, you might do a couple of sections here and there where you present yourself and it gets easier every time. You're going to be so nervous to begin with, but I promise you it is worth it as well. How do you, uh, how do you feel watching your, yourself on video? Oh, I hate it, man. I still hate it. <laughs> I cringe. But it's, yeah, you just you put it on there and you never look back. <laughs> so just get through the editing and yeah. then put it up and... and yeah. Even, you know what, you can practice with stories on Instagram or even stories now on um, YouTube because they have stories. Just put yourself on there. Hey, guys, I'm working on this today and be, just be you. I've literally done it where I've done a story. It's like, yes, guys, um, I'm in my PJs. I'm a human. By the way, tomorrow we're going to have a live stream <laughs> at this time because that's one thing that you have on top of the mainstream kind of media. You know, they're so pristine. They... Um, they put out that, you know, it's almost like a non-human robotic, you know, you're perfect all the time, but we're not. And I think people can relate to that. So just be you. Yeah. Can I just say, um, like, all I know about cake, cakes and cake decorations, I've learned from Nailed It from Netflix. Oh, yeah. <laughs> have you seen that? Yeah, I have. That's yes. so yeah. funny. And it's funny because as you're talking, I'm thinking about it. I'm like, you know what? They don't show anything about the recipes, really. It's just all about how you decorate. You know, you put together the foundation. Right, and then it's more about how well it's sort of decorated. Even though they taste it at the end, it's like everyone laughed because it looks like a you know a pile of poop at the end. But it's it's funny, and it's such a big area, and it's so popular. You know that whole idea of creating these intricate decorations, um, and it's so it's so niche. And I guess that's where you you sit in, right, with that that niche around decoration, and and people are so passionate about making it look good. Yeah, definitely. Right? Yeah, and that's obviously obviously that's quite a a, a big trending um, area in, in cakes. Um, and it's funny because like a lot of YouTubers are like, oh, you know, we always say focus on your passion, focus on a niche. And like within certain categories, they're like, you know, subcategories. So within like cooking and there's baking and within that there's cakes and within cakes there's like decorating specifically. And you've carved out a really good niche in, in decoration. Um, and did you know about that straight away? Did you realize, oh, wow, I've, this is my niche? Or did it just, you just fell into that, that, that flow of things? I think it was a full interflow. I mean, starting off with the, the recipes and um, just picking up on the signs. So people were commenting more, people were liking more on that sort of content, people were tuning more, etching into those sort of videos. And so you know where to go with your channel. But it's always, you know, you still have to keep it aligned to what you love to. Because if you're doing it and you're not really investing your passion into it, your spirit, well, it's going to show. So, yeah. That's cool. And... Um so is that something you're going to keep doing? It's like, I'm going to always be in decorating or is it going to be something you're going to spin off? You're going to try something around that? What's, what, are your, what are your goals? I would like to free up my time so that I can do more extravagant cakes for the channel, to be honest. For me, time is the biggest uh, challenge. I used to do two videos a week and now I've dropped down to one. And it's been like that for a couple of years now. But, um, but even dropping down, have you still seen growth in the channel? Uh, it's still growing. It hasn't stopped growing. It hasn't grown like it used to. But to be honest, I still love what I do, and I'll just I'll just keep at it. If anything, it's a um, it's a great way to still connect with people in that industry, and you can also make um, kind of build your business around it too. If you're scaled back from two videos to one, what are you 
doing with the rest of your time then? That, you know, we've so the rest of my time? I am um, – so I've got this uh, – ca- oh, sorry. <laughs> I do custom cake toppers and custom frosting combs as well. So I tie all of that into cake decorating and the passion still. I also run classes and workshops, which is heaps of fun, um, and just little things in the background just – take up a lot of time, a lot of editing. Um, I really need to invest in someone to edit the videos for me, a camera woman and whatnot. <laughs> That'll really help too. So you do all of that yourself currently? Yes, I'm the camera woman, the marketer, the editor and everything else. It's good fun. And I mean, I'm not complaining. I love it. And also then running additional businesses that are focused yeah. around your niche as well. Right? That's it, yeah. yeah. So you're out there marketing those, creating the cake toppers, Selling them, Doing everything. customers, traveling for classes and whatnot. And yeah. it'd be cool to, to bring it all online though. I think that'd be a great way to free up time. So you're not, you know, preparing for 12 people in a class or six people in the class and you don't have to travel out of home to get there and set up and clean up. It'll cover, um, it'll help to relieve a lot of time if I were to do live stream classes where everybody knows what the um, criteria will be for the class. They all bring their own utensils and then... Together, we decorate the class. You could do it with um, webcams. That would be really awesome. That way you can see where they're traveling and whatnot. Um, that would be really good. And then I'd probably have more time for tutorials because <laughs> it would cut a lot of time out for me. So you've diversified sort of where, where your revenue streams come from. So it's not just YouTube ad revenue. You do classes um, as well. So you're diversifying where you get like income from. from yeah. 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 So from the, yeah, the toppers, the acrylic side of things, the, the laser cut system. Um, so there's um, group classes, there's one-on-one classes. I have got some recorded classes as well um, that are available on Vimeo. So the pre-recorded classes are really great to um, help supplement and fund the channel and whatnot. So like, Rosie, where, like, where did you go to to get the information to go and do all this? Like, So you're a YouTube creator creating videos about cake decorating. Where, where did you get the information or the idea to then start doing, run your own business around around that, you know, cake toppers or workshops? Um, wh- where does a YouTuber turn to to do that? Uh, for the classes, it was more so people asking me um, in private messages, do you run any classes? Um, I'd really love to learn X, Y, Z. And so I started researching where can I run the classes and I found a really good place where they take a commission and – um, they, they're a shop for cake decorating, so they supply all of the tools. So it's about kind of researching what facilities would best suit what you'd like to do. Um, and I was very lucky to find them. Um, and then in terms of recorded online classes, uh, that was just more research, I guess. Um, Vimeo. Vimeo does the whole, um, you pay one membership and people can come and they can pay a specific amount to rent the videos or they can buy the videos and just of learning what is out there at your disposal that you can use for recorded classes and VMA was one of the best ways to go about it. Yeah, I'm still struggling for the live stream classes though because apparently you can't do that on Facebook. Apparently that's not a big no-no. <laughs> so. Actually, that's an interesting th- area. It's like the, the idea of live streaming um, and how that's worked for you. It's, it's, a, it's a, especially for a lot of even advanced YouTubers that we work with, they're very afraid of live streaming. Um, and I guess, you know, there's that whole unedited element to it. It's, it's, mm. it's you raw. And if you make a mistake, everyone sees it. And I guess in the area of cake decoration, that's going to be tricky, right? Oh, definitely. I mean, if you're – everybody makes mistakes. I mean, the most skilled cake decorator is still going to stuff up at some point. Yeah. And I think it's just owning it and trying to, I don't know, make it fun in the moment. <laughs> Um, I, th- there's been a few screw ups of mine while live streaming. Right. Definitely. Uh, how did that? Did just tell us a story about that. Like, how did it well, happen? What? Did, how did the audience react? There were a lot of crying, laughing faces. So that was <laughs> promising, <laughs> thank God. But I remember doing one on Instagram, and that was my biggest fail. So um, I used to make fondant booties. So they're little boots made out of fondant. Booties. Yeah, fondant booties. Oh, bo- boots. booties, right? Booties. Like boots, like yeah. shoes. Shoes. Yeah. Right, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Not not butts. No, no. Edible fondant butts. That could be a big thing for you. Yeah, I think that, yeah. that's <laughs> training. Uh, <laughs> no, and um, <laughs> yes, I was trying to make that on Instagram and I hadn't made them in a pretty long time. Um, 
but I thought I'd wing it, right? And there I was making these booties and the fondant was way too thin, right? So it was really, really flimsy and I was sticking it together. And, you know, in the process, you're like, okay, now next do this. And, it, and it's just falling apart and you're trying to keep professionals like, guys, this really isn't working out. And um, I just made a couple of jokes like, this is how you don't make fondant booties. And, <laughs> you know, people were responding better to that. But you feel really guilty because it's like, yeah. okay, you've promised these people that you're going to show them how to make these boots it's not working out for you there are people in england who have waited till 3 a.m to be here with you <laughs> and you've really you know yeah it, it hurts it hurts because it's like oh, you don't want to disappoint so but yeah that well, hasn't scared you off live streaming right we were talking off air earlier about you just you, you're developing live stream as, as a regular format on your youtube channel so can you tell us a bit about that because fred sort of alluded to a lot of the creators we talk to are shit scared of live stream because they're so used to having the control and pre-record yeah. and edit but um well, yeah what's your experience with that to be honest my personality type i'm not one i was always the shyest person i knew and youtube really helped to open me up so you have a lot of people who follow you and they're incredibly supportive so you know that if you are gonna stuff up these people aren't gonna eat you alive and if they do you don't really want them on your channel <laughs> so um yeah, you, you work through it. Every time you stuff up, it gets easier the next time around. You build, your, I guess, a skin to it. Um, but you have to break it. You have to break through the first couple of times. I remember the very first time I live streamed, I was debating with that, you know, go live now button for like half an hour, <laughs> inching towards it, pulling a button. <laughs> and I was doing it and just let the people know how nervous you are at the time. It makes it a lot easier because I remember I was shaking and I remember looking at the camera and goes, oh, guys, I'm really, really nervous. Like, can you see my hand here? Because I kind of, it's vibrating that fast, it's invisible. Um, so, yeah, just break through that. It's very important to just put yourself in the most uncomfortable position and know you're going to get through it. And people will always be supportive. Like, 90% of them will be like, good stuff, you know, you did well. And so it you really didn't, helps. You didn't lose any subscribers or anything? It just, people oh, just... Oh, at the beginning you do, for some reason. Live stream, it just, you lose a few subscribers, but... At the end of the day, you are connecting a lot better with your audience and the people who've left, maybe it wasn't such a good fit after all. Right. So. And what was the long-term uh, implication of live stream compared to your you know, pre-formatted versions? How does that work comparatively? Oh, um, it definitely doesn't take as much time when you do live stream. Um, it's great because you can be spontaneous with it. Um, that's kind of the beauty of it. It's not very planned. You have a general idea of what you'd like to do and then they can control it as well. So if they say, oh, you know, move the camera over here, we'd actually really like to see you um, pipe, I don't know, like a border with a 1M tip so you can bring out the 1M tip. And it's really great. Like there's a lot of room for uh, shaping it to what the people want as well and compared to... How does live stream perform though uh, compared to your normal videos? Does live stream perform worse than your other videos or does it perform better or how does it go compared to the other ones? Going off the views that I've seen on my live stream videos compared to my pre, uh, recorded videos, live streams actually do better. They might not wow. be like that for everybody, but for me, for some reason, they actually do better than my pre-recorded ones. So that, That's awesome. Yeah. So live streaming has obviously worked quite well for you. Um, so is, are there any ideas on how you want to evolve that or keep doing a channel or people now really used to it being, is it something you do like weekly? How, how, what's the future of live streaming for you? So I do it fortnightly. Um, for me, I'm, it's still in its very early stages. I've only been doing it maybe for two, three months maybe. Um, but what I've kind of planned at the moment to help it along the way is I've bought better equipment so that it's a more enjoyable, I guess, view. I know a lot of people have said, you know, live streams, the best thing about it is to keep it organic, is not to think too much into the production value because that's not why people are joining. But... Having a really good microphone, I know for a fact, is really going to make it a much better experience for people. So I invested in a um, Filmmaker by Road Filmmaker Kit, which mm. is really good. Um, not a sponsor. Not a sponsor. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> I'm just joking. No, we can mention any brand. It's all good. <laughs> One thing that I recently invested in, because I don't have a cameraman, um, is a gimbal. And this one here in particular, it has tracking. So you'll put your phone on it. And um, it kind of reads the gimbal where your hand is so you can make it track. And so if I'm piping something, I very, very easily get lost in what I'm doing. And I'll, without noticing, put my hand close to me. And suddenly I'm out of view. And people are like, hey, where'd she go? <laughs> so this gimbal will track 
all the movements that I need. It is my own cameraman and it's just going to change everything. Awesome. That's good. So, have you, and were, were there, have you started using this new equipment? Um, I'm waiting for my new camera to come in. So I haven't actually tried using it yet because I also need this attachment, blah, 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 blah. but once I do, I think it'll really change things up. Yeah, awesome. Yeah. Good. And you're, so you live streaming for you now is going to be part of your ongoing strategy, keeping that going? Yeah, definitely. And definitely. do you use anything like Super Chat? No. I mean, it's. I think it's active, but I don't really think people use it. So. Yeah, that's actually an interesting mm. one because we get that a lot from a lot of big creators. Like they'll obviously live streaming it hard enough and then you say Super Chat and they're like, what? <laughs> but it's, you know, there are some amazing stories out there of creators who've used it so inventively yeah. and done so well from it. Um, and it, 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 it's a big area. So it's really interesting to see the different creators and how they a, a approach Super Chat. Definitely. I think it also depends on what you're doing for the live stream. So if you're creating something and you don't really have the time to look up, to look at the screen, someone can pay for a super chat and you wouldn't even know about it. Mm. So you have to have a cameraman or someone who's able to monitor that so that you can, yeah, as you go, you can answer those questions. But I always leave that to the end because I don't have a cameraman. So I'll flick through and I'll say, everyone bear with me. I'm just going to see if there's any questions and then right at the end, I'll answer them. If there's any new questions, I'll wait around and yeah, that's pretty much how it's great. about so, it. So live streaming is now obviously part of, of what you do and the audience has come to expect that from you um, as part of your usual programming and you're happy to keep going with it. Um, yeah. Yeah, it's cool. And is there, any, I guess you do live events as well, don't you? Yes, yeah, so I've run a couple of classes live. That's where I sort of wanted to also take um, the channel and it was pretty all right. It was pretty successful. But again, you, yeah, for that you do really need to invest in the equipment so just to make sure that they're able to properly see exactly what you're doing, you need a cameraman or something at least to um, keep it on track. A um, bit more challenge because you have to keep up with the people. So if you're decorating at one stage, they might still be on the last step. So it's a bit of a balancing act there too. When I'm on the mic. And before we go on, let's just take a quick break to talk about something very special. Yep. Shameless plug time. We also have an app. Um, the app is basically designed to create a global community of creators. So bring together all the creators all over the world to have great conversations um, and also give them access to a bunch of extra content to make them even better at what they do. Definitely. And we've made this thing so it's available both on iPhone through the App Store and for your Android device on Google Play. So jump on, check it out, join the creator generation. What was it like when you told the people around you when you, you know you're studying psychology, yeah. you're spending a lot of your spare time baking and, and filming stuff? Mm. What what was that like with the people around you? Oh, uh, they definitely weren't supportive, I can tell you that. Yeah. And then um, you kept going? I kept going regardless. Yeah. yeah, I got told, get a real jump. Why are you wasting your time with this? Da, 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 da. And now, you know, I'm the one in the house that's probably <laughs> the most successful. <laughs> own it, own it. Uh, yeah, but so, so what, like, what did you, what kept you going? Like with everyone around you not understanding or, or, and telling you get a real job, whatever that might be, what kept you on the path? Uh, to be honest, the passion. I loved it. I got really good feedback and made friends from people online and they were the support, that, that, that all that I needed. So. Awesome. <laughs> so, Rosie, what sort of conversations do you have with people who don't understand YouTube then? You kind of have to explain to them what you do and I think they, they're more understanding of it when you have a small business around it because they don't really see the, um, you know, for job-wise, you, know, you need to make money. And so they think, oh, YouTube, but how can that, you know, make you an income? They always ask, do you make money off that? Every single time. And it's like, you work around it. So it's, you can make money. Um, YouTube doesn't really pay very much. So you, you create it in other ways. So the toppers, the combs and stuff. And just using, um, you know, your audience is going to be interested in this thing, these kind of things, because they're into cake decorating. And so there's already a market for you. Um, so maybe they can understand it in that way, but it's not really why, you know, it, it's a great bonus of it. But if you go in creating a channel for the sole purpose of, oh, I want to create clients, it's not very authentic and it's going to come through. So it's a, yeah, you just got to explain in other ways how you can make a money off it and they'll better understand. But, you know. Well, what about people who are like closest to you, like your partner and family? Like, how, what do they think of it? 
they weren't too keen on the idea to begin with because, and they come from a place of love. It's how are you going to support yourself? How is this going to, you know, fund you in the future and, and whatnot? Um, but now, you know, they've seen that I can make an earning through things around it. And so they're totally cool with it. And um, and now they'll go to family, oh, you know, the son's channel, and they'll brag about it or whatever. But at the beginning, they, they, they didn't. Um, but you just push through it and you got the support from the audience and um, my partner's actually very understanding. He's fantastic with that. And can you talk to him, him uh, about? about YouTube? Yeah. Not really. <laughs> like I keep it really short because I uh, yeah. <laughs> doesn't really interest him too much. Like um, I, I'm trying to make my channel a little bit better quality for viewing so I'm and I bought this new camera and I bought a new lens and I bought a gimbal and I bought a step I bought all these things and last night we we're trying to go to bed and I just I was just ruminating about all the things that I could do and I poke him he's trying to see if I go babe there's three points of stabilization I've got the gimbal the stabilizing the camera stabilizing the lens and he goes that's okay babe go to bed <laughs> look at him no one understands me <laughs> uh, yeah so connecting with people who have a YouTube channel who can understand all this? I am dying to have this conversation with them. Yeah. Just bottled it up inside, and you're yeah. just bursting <laughs> enthusiasm it. for your new gear. Awesome, so exciting, cool. See, I mean, obviously, the uh, the idea of building community to support uh, YouTubers is, is a big thing going forward, and a big part of the programs we run um, are about you know building new communities, right? Because that support network is so important. So all the programs we run have that built into them, um, because like you just said, you, it's hard to talk to someone about all the things you're going through. Um, and it's such an intensive process, you know, constantly creating and delivering new content. Mm. And not to, ha not to have that is hard. I mean, you know, the other professions, you know, like, you know, doctors, lawyers, whatever it is, they can bounce ideas off people within their profession or home and people will understand where they're coming from. But for YouTubers, that can be difficult because the mm. process itself is very isolating. And then, you know, if you don't have that community support, it's even harder. So what, what would you say, like, if you had a wish list, like, what would you, like, love to see like what kind of support would you love to see for youtubers in the youtube community definitely more groups i think meeting people in the same industry will be so helpful people who are close to you um maybe even creating an app like tinder but like not for that sort of reasons <laughs> like oh who's on youtube you know creating near me um the meetups will be fantastic uh events where like workshops and stuff will be really really handy you get to learn more um I guess in terms of creating new content, keeping uh, motivated and also finding those people in your vicinity that you can connect with and help each other out. That's a huge thing. I'd, YouTube is still in the very early stages and I think that's why there's not these support groups around. But once they get those in, oh. You know, the, a lot of creators, like we see a lot of creators, um, there's a lot of opportunities get opened up to meet other, other experts or other YouTube creators and they don't take them up. Oh, gotcha. Um, obviously, you have seen the value in that or you've been yearning for it and now that it's, you've got mm. it in front of you, you're jumping at it. But, you know, have you seen any, like, do you have a, an inkling as to why some, cre like, a, quite a fair few creators wouldn't want, like, are reticent to engage with that sort of thing at the moment? I wonder if... I guess it depends what attitude you're going in with. So if you're, uh, you know, I don't want to share my ideas, someone might steal them or you're just, you really think of it too much in a business way, then maybe you'd be a little bit hesitant to share your knowledge and um, I guess think of it in, in that sort of dog-eat-dog -dog kind of <laughs> world. But it's not really like that. It's a very sharing community, so it's a shame. Like people should be, you know, helping each other out and sharing um, I guess even organizing days where you might go over to help them record and vice versa, like there is such power and um, benefit in that if you can find someone to help you. Do, you, do you think those people, for, for you, they, do they need to be into baking and cake decorating to, no, for you to be able not. to relate? No, I don't think so at all. I think just the at the end of the day, the recording styles that you have can be um, transferred to other sort of, um, areas, if you know what I mean. Yep. It, it's a lot more fun too. It's a, it's a new challenge. Like, okay, so today we're recording maybe someone who's into journalism. So you'll go around and you might have a different style of camera work and it'll be really fun for you too. You know what I mean? For them to come to you and then have to 
focus the camera on a still object. That'd be a new sort of way to record for them. And you'll you'll learn, you'll pick up new things like that as well. So I think, yeah, it can be transferred. Yeah, awesome. What, what would what do you think would get creators out of their the shell or the little <laughs> hole they've created, the comfort little the little nest to get them out there and getting more engaged? I think having something close by as well <laughs> yeah, would be a huge help too. Yeah. It, uh, that proximity element, it, it, it is big uh, and it's important, especially because uh, like a lot of creators, they have enormous reach and you know the opportunity for them is, is huge and it would be even more if they had someone or a group to connect with and talk to about all the things they're facing so they can grow better. So yeah, it, it makes a massive difference, but it's a hard one, you know, if you don't have that connection or how do you even start it? Would you ever be tempted to start your own groups? Uh, to be honest, if I couldn't find one, I would have probably tried to start a Facebook page or something. I think that's what it is. It, you just have to realise that it is available out there for you and just take the plunge. Mm. And join groups mm. um, and realise that there are lots of people that are in your exact same position. I don't know. Did YouTube reach out to you to join the, the uh, partner manager the program? Yeah, they did. did I didn't what was know what was your it. response to that? Were you, did you think it was legitimate? Like, I actually didn't at the start. Yeah. So many people <laughs> say that. They all go like, ah, this isn't really YouTube. Yeah. Yeah, they expect something is like So did you what, what like did you like what did you think? Fanfare. Did you think it was ant dancing naked? Like, what? For everybody. No, God no. <laughs> no one wants to see that. <laughs> Actually. What? <laughs> Sorry, back to Rosie. Um Yeah, what 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 did you what did you think? Like what and what made Either you spam mail? Or just um People trying to take information and trying, I don't know, maybe your login details to, I don't know, hack your channel or something. You always got to be careful with these emails. Yeah. And then how did you realise it was legit? Uh, I, I just inquired more. Okay. <laughs> and then they mentioned it on the actual YouTube platform as well. Right. Okay. So you can kind of piece the two together. It's like, oh, hang on, maybe. It's funny because you, I guess a lot of creators imagine YouTube to be this enormous machine, mm. right? And I guess well, it when, when they, well, it is, but, but when they talk to you, like, I don't think they've ever really conceptualized what that would sound like. It's like, is it an email? Is it a phone call? Do they know where I am? Do they know who I am? You know, so when you get an email, like, hey. There are people who work <laughs> for YouTube and they do talk to the yeah. creators. And it, it, can be, it can be a lot, especially because I guess if you haven't talked to anyone, you know, up till you're, you know, maybe 100,000 subscribers or so, it could be weird to come out of nowhere and like you, you see that, you know, especially when you're probably getting other mail from a lot of different sources, right? Yeah, um... A lot of from, um, I guess, small companies here and they're looking to work sponsorship with you and then you also think, oh, you know, are they legitimate? I had one, oh, so interesting. He, um, they wanted to create a, oh, maybe I shouldn't say it. this is like their idea and what if someone steals it? <laughs> uh, you can say they wanted yeah. to create something. They wanted to create something and they were offering me like a trip to Africa to be a part of the, um, to feature in the movie that they were kind of, thinking of doing and this and that is like oh, interesting but then you look at the very bottom and the one thing I always look out for is like a company name a contact number and anything to make them look legitimate they had none of that so you could be just any average Joe writing this out and if I don't see a company or something I'm not going to take it seriously so I think that's one thing to look out for good advice. Come, come to Africa you can be a queen <laughs> and they will give you a pony <laughs> like hmm good deal <laughs> What would you say um, out there, what's sort of the best uh, event or help you've seen out there for YouTube creators? Oh, I'll tell you what, VidCon was really good. I had this expectation of VidCon, I didn't even know what to expect, but I didn't realise they had informational seminars on just about everything. And there was um, an app that you could download that gives you the time slots and all the possible things that you can learn with that ticket, because I think there's three different levels. And I just spent literally from the opening to closing, going to all of the different seminars and the information that they have is something incredible. So I definitely check that I, out. I, I want to point out here, we're not sponsored by VidCon, oh, but no. we absolutely agree <laughs> that it is an <laughs> awesome event. Um, and we have it here in Australia. It's in you know the US and London now. Um, fantastic. A lot of fantastic information for creators. Um, and yeah, if you have the opportunity go along because there aren't many huge events like that for creators and it's a great spot to also meet other creators, isn't it? Definitely. Yeah. yeah. So any other, anything else you've seen out there that's that's good? Um, you guys do a really good job too. <laughs> 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 you. 
You have yeah. to say that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it is. Uh, what about um, any assistance from YouTube? Is that is that something that um, comes up? Yeah, they do have their free video. Um, it's like a playlist, and they they walk you through everything. But they've also got people that you can contact as well. I think once you reach a certain threshold of followers, you can request to be appointed like a um, a manager or a helper that you can ask questions and you can have some video kind of chats and stuff with them, which is really handy too. It, it's a funny thing because there is a general perception online with creators, funnily enough with a lot of the lower end creators, that YouTube doesn't help, right? Um, and it, it's... Having worked with YouTube now, we see that's absolutely not true. They care a lot about creators. Mm-hmm. It's just I think people don't realize how enormous the platform is. Yeah. When you know how many billions of viewers there are every week and um, there is so much content being produced. And at YouTube, it's just one company. It's hard to get all that information out. And like they do have things like the Creator Academy, which I think we were talking yeah, about before. Yeah, that's the one, Creator Academy. Um, to help with a lot of creators. But, you know, what, what in your opinion could they do to help more i mean you as a bigger creator have access to a partner manager who you obviously mm-hmm. are talking to um like what do you think though for creators from the ground up to where you are what could they do to help more uh, definitely if they could organize more events for people yeah. um workshops um maybe even have their own uh database of people where kind of like a facebook but just for content creators that'd be really cool for people to connect with each other and um, plan meetups and whatnot. Mm. I mean, I'm positive there should be something on like meetup.com or there definitely are Facebook pages out there of um, content creators for Melbourne, for example, is one that I recently joined, which has been fantastic. Uh, just, yeah, helping people to connect with other people around them and having these resources available to people. Mm. Yeah. They can organise that would be fantastic. I want to shift gears a bit. Is that cool? I want to talk about, have you worked with brands, Rosie? Not often, i got to say. I worked with a few brands. Um, but not in a very professional way. Like you need, I know you need the the posters that you send out, there's contracts and whatnot, and you've really got to uh, standardise it. But mm. my experience has been just very casual. Oh, so. uh, the interesting thing was Fred talking about like how food, like food content is so hot right now in, in mainstream media, talking about, you know, nailed it. Uh, MasterChef keeps kicking on all over the world. Um, and there's, in talking about your live uh event like workshops etc a lot of those tv celebrity celebrity chefs are now doing live workshops at uh food events that are based around these things and i'm just just interested to see if you've seen any any other food youtube creators crossing over into those uh either onto mainstream tv or things like that or into those mainstream food events that happen all over the world where people get to see their celebrity chef up the front cooking their chocolate fondant boots. Okay, I, ha- I have <laughs> seen <Nash>. them. <laughs> but they're, they're more at the, the specialty expos like Cake, Bake and Sweet Show or the Cake Expo. Um, I haven't really seen any that I recognise from YouTube on TV, but I don't think it's very far away at all. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's, it's a space where they're really trying to innovate yeah. like everything, you know. Right? I mean, I, I saw an ad the other day for a top chef. He, If you buy an apartment in this very expensive apartment block, he'll come and cook your first dinner for you. And I mean, he's like, like, an, like an internationally recognised <laughs> chef. They're going to fly out to do that. And it's like, wow, they're really doing some strange things. But, you know, people are really attracted to that, that idea of, like, well, you know, what food means to them. And, and now they're doing these, all these sorts of crossovers and interesting things, you know. So, um, yeah, it's interesting to see how that whole, all the space is being innovated generally. Uh, do you feel like there's any pressure on you to do new and more interesting things? Um, I think everyone should go in with that pressure regardless to always keep it interesting and make it more enjoyable for the viewers too. Um, I think that's a great thing with live stream. You can achieve that through live stream. So really change up channel that way. Um, but yeah, even cake decorating, it's easy. It's easy to change things up, I think. With, with, with that, that, you call it pressure, but pressure to keep forging ahead and making it interesting and innovating. Who keeps you accountable to that? Like who's your... Oh, definitely the viewer. The viewer? Yeah. Like I'll put out polls on the community side and I'll put out, you know, questions, would you guys like A or B or if neither, leave me a comment below and let me know what you'd like to see. So it actually takes a lot of that creative pressure off you because you'll get to know exactly what your viewers will want from you and you can shape it around that. So that's really, really handy. And So that community engagement and that building that 
audience. Is that really important to you? Do you spend a lot of time and effort on that? And Definitely. Not as much as I wish I, I could, like, in terms of finding the time to sit down and read through comments and whatnot, but I do try to get to all of them. But you definitely need it to shape your channel, to shape the content. At the end of the day, you're there for them. And also because you love what you do. But do you do you feel more connected to your own content when you put more of yourself into it then? Definitely. It's a lot more fun as well. Like you don't yeah, you don't, wouldn't think it. <laughs> <laughs> so if we were to give the viewers like your top three tips, one of them would be put more of yourself in the Oh, hundred percent. Definitely. Yeah. Break out of that comfort zone. It's not do, it's not serving you. Believe me. What would you, what Funny would you should mention that, Fred, because we <laughs> do ask all the creators yeah, what their top three so tips what, are. So. What, would, what, would the, what would the next two best tips be? Um, so there was definitely that one. The second one is um, your content and your your video skills are probably going to be just as important. So if you're, depending on what you're creating, for example, for me, cake decorating, you want to keep the shots really focused in on what you're doing. You want to change things up. Don't keep it static, just one angle at all times people get bored so you do need to change the angles or maybe add movement into your videos and things like that to keep it interesting to keep them engaged and I think there's also a sweet spot for how long your videos go for and everyone's different I mean some people might do it for example um, to get more ads shown on the video you, you want to make it longer but that's not necessarily the best thing because if you drag it out too long it's like well you could have explained that in two minutes instead of four so finding that sweet spot where people are tracking, where they're viewing. You can usually see this in analytics as well. So are people dropping off towards the end? Are they peaking at a certain area? What did you do during that time in your video to have it peak? And just work out those. And I'm not great for analytics, but I think that's one thing that I did pick up is which part of the content are people really interested in and how long are they staying? So make it a decent, sweet spot sort of a length. As well. That's great advice. Very good advice. On that. We'll have to wrap it up, but Rosie from Rosie's Dessert Spot, check it out on YouTube, but thank you for joining us on Creator Generation. Thanks for having me, guys. I certainly want to try decorating a cake. I don't. I don't have the skill that <laughs> Rosie has. I believe I can. Yeah, Rosie will teach you. Yeah, if you guys will have any questions for Rosie or any questions for us, let us know through the socials, or if you want to use the Creator Generation app, please go ahead and do so. It's falling. It is. Until next time. Bye. See ya. Generation, look on the mic.